Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with I, your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 573. That's 573 of the Agassino Zynga show. I hope you're doing well wherever this podcast may be finding you. Hope you're doing well. How am I? I'm doing pretty good. How am I? How am I? How am I is actually a good term to actually use at the moment, but how am I? I'm doing pretty well, all things considered. Apologies for the radio silence on my end. I've been MIA. I've been up and around here and there, places that I don't need to divulge or speak about on the public forum. You know how it is. But I've also, in between times, been absolutely smashing the youtube live streams because of all the stuff that's been happening with brendan Schaub and that whole crew and the fight fighting the kid and this beef is happening with him and annie lederman and kalila and bobby lee from tiger bell it's been a bit mad in it so because i didn't want to flood all my podcast stuff with that sort of news and because it's a bit you know emotionally draining to be dealing with people's bullshit on a daily basis i kind of basically split stuff so i did a few live streams where i spoke about some of that stuff and then i basically forgot about doing a podcast you know it kind of slipped my mind but also you know life i've been busy doing other things as well so that's obviously impacted it but doesn't matter i'm back in the hot seat today and ready to pod ready to bloody pod i was going to go back and talk about all the other topics i had previously but there's no point time moves on time is but a flat circle we just have to keep striding one foot in front of the other no point wasting time I'm crying over spilt milk so we're just going to continue and pick it up from where we have been so um first things first and something that's just on my timeline on the front of my mind at the moment especially off the back of what happened on sunday um united you know capitulated basically against brighton away from home and we lost four nil four zero right to a team that doesn't really score too many goals in the league to a team not really known for their finishing they're known for playing attractive football we were basically lucky to beat them at home because we had basically Ronaldo playing for us but if you watched the entire game you would have seen Brighton would probably you know had left Old Trafford when we faced them at home probably feeling a little bit bad about themselves right like how did we lose to these guys right we were absolutely playing them off the park and then you know they made a couple of mistakes let us have a couple of opportunities and our best finishers on the pitch were able to kind of dispatch their goals and we basically won as you know most matches goals win games especially if you've got a pretty decent defense but I guess in this game um at Brighton's home ground away from home we basically capitulated right um no one basically turned up it feels like most of the United players are kind of clocked out they're already ready to go on their holidays if not they're already at their holidays some of them and you know you combine that with Brighton being the better football side and our players not turning up it doesn't matter because you know gods win games but you have to play well to kind of get those chances we didn't play well at all Brighton completely dominates dominated us from the beginning to the end it was lucky it was actually only four it could have been more it should have been more again if they would have finished some of their chances and for not some heroics from flipping David De Gea you know you'd think about it really in the team who would you save and rescue and give another opportunity if you're being charitable you say David De Gea and Ronaldo if you're being really harsh you just say only Ronaldo because you know he's basically done his job you know he's come into a team that's been asked to score goals and the team that doesn't really create many chances um with not much you know service or help in and around the box where he's at especially at his age and he's still been able to put up some big numbers so maybe Ronaldo's been the only kind of saving grace but that game against Brighton you know if not for the heroics of David De Gea we would have been in big trouble and then of course we lose but those kind of games I don't think I was surprised to fans like myself because you know I've kind of long said we were basically due a drubbing like that and we were due to have a season like this too because I think for many many seasons we've been kind of kidded by our league finishes i think league finishes have basically kidded us some fans not myself not me because i've always believed if we don't get rid of the glazers doesn't matter what we do in terms of structure that this is never going to be a successful football club because the glazers you know number one priority isn't to win trophies and to be the best club in the world it's to kind of you know raise us in terms of a commercial entity in that way shape or form but it's not to kind of bring footballing success so unless we get rid of the owners there's no point of, we're not going to ever be successful under the Glazers. it's just not happening um and you don't you know you, you you don't become the glazer family with the amount of investments and the amount of millions and billions that they've kind of accumulated over the years and be a family that's also willing to kind of relinquish control even if you don't know what you're doing in that space you're just not going to do it because why would you evidence has shown you over the years that most of your decisions that you've made have been pretty decent they've made your you and your family a bucket load of cash so you've also going to keep betting yourself anyway you know the problems are you know far range when it comes to united but one thing i don't think is 
any kind of sensible fan with a brain would say is an issue would be Ralph Ragnick. You wouldn't think so. Maybe on an individual game by game basis, there might be some selection changes or some subs that I wouldn't really be a big fan of. But then, you know, the occasions that Pogba came off when he was playing pretty well, the, you know, at some points during Ralph's tenure where I didn't think it was the right decision to make. And then, you know, he takes him off and this whoever comes on basically changes the game or wins the game. So, you know, you have to kind of take those things a pinch of salt. But overall, I don't think you could it's a fair it's a fair interpretation of the event to say Ralph Ragnick is basically the reason why we are playing so poorly at the moment because you know United have basically made every single manager walk through the door look like a terrible manager you know even managers who weren't who who are terrible anyway we made them look worse like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is a good example um but this article or this video that I've seen online just really rattled me Rio Ferdinand basically it says here the headline courtesy of Daily Mail Rio Ferdinand criticizes Ralph Ragnick for airing Man United's dirty laundry in public and claims that the interim boss should be banned from press conferences which is a wild thing to say right because again like I said this guy comes in as an interim coach right which is bizarre to say at least for a club our size usually you'd imagine if you fire a manager so late into the season usually big clubs don't wait that long to fire managers this is why you get rid of them sharpest so you can give the next guy coming in a chance to actually rescue the season or make some sort of impact where you can maybe it can maybe inform your long-term decision making process they didn't do that they bring him in an interim they didn't spin this story that Ralph Ragnick is also going to be a consultant he's going to help us redo our structure and Ralph Ragnick is also somebody you know has been very well known in terms of being somebody behind the scenes who's built clubs up and implementing structures been able to you know lead to clubs being successful many many years after he's left so that gets fans gas that gets them optimistic but then of course the way Ralph likes to play football the teams that he's coached or the teams that he's helped manage or whatever he may be consult with the type of football that they play that fast attacking gig and press front foot type of football none of our players can do that none of them right they're all going to be blowing out their asses so we saw it for 45 minutes against crystal palace and then from what we can interpret on the outside it looks like the players basically you know decided they're not going to do that again right this is not for us we can't basically get fit enough to do that kind of football between now and the end of the season there's no point so the players threw in the towel the moment you know Rafa Ragnick got the job because they just couldn't you know keep up with those pace of that kind of training but if you go back to it the reason why Rafa Ragnick was also unsuccessful in the spell or whatever hasn't been as great as a manager he wasn't able to bring in his own guys so he doesn't able to bring his own guys he can't make the changes he needs he doesn't he's not able to bring in signings and stuff and then the only thing that he can do in terms of kind of trying to get us to react to change because it feels like united don't really listen when it comes to we don't really react or make big sweeping changes to the club when things are going well we only do it when things are going bad we're very reactive in that way shape or form so we have to lose many games before we sack a manager like ollie we can't just decide hey you've done a good job after europa league final you, you know we lost that you've done a good job getting us there you're not going to be a manager who's going to be competing with the two shows clubs and the peps and you know we just we, we you will need more help than any other elite manager would need to kind of get over the line so why don't we just shake your hand now let you go and then get another guy in we don't we wait until it gets really dark until a point in time comes where we, we basically left with no other option but to pick Ralph Ragnick and then we start complaining that he's not doing the things that we want to do whatever move on the thing that's really crazy like I said is I think that we only learn through defeat and through bad things and Ralph has been going out of his way to say the most you know eye-opening things in a press conference that I think many fans especially the ones who kind of bury their hands heads in the sands or the ones who think that one player or one manager or a DM is going to sort us it's been very refreshing to hear him say no the reason why we're at where we're at at the moment is because of a b c d and until we get these things in place we're not going to be successful again it's been somewhat refreshing to hear and to see because he's been calling it out and it feels like he's been calling it out in the hope that he can pressure the club into making the right decision because we don't learn you know when it's going good when you learn when it's going bad so for Rio to come out and tell him he doesn't he shouldn't be talking because he's airing up main that public dirt laundry in the public that's what we need we need our dirty laundry to be aired in the public because we don't want to make the changes we you know players or people that come into united who are kind of pally pally with the glazers or whatnot they most likely sign ndas or something along those kind of lines or they get given so many sweet benefits that you don't ever see outside of that circle that they go out of their way to defend anything that's going on in that regime but there's no denying you know categorically that the glazer regime or the glazer ownership of man united has been a disastrous failure a disastrous mismanagement some would say maybe the greatest mismanagement of a football club in football history with the way that they've kind of single-handedly 
destroyed this club from the outside you know with so from the inside with a death by a thousand cuts it's been truly crazy to see the mismanagement over the years and it's been even more disappointing to see former players ex-managers you know basically remain silent on the whole topic and not want to talk about it or if they do speak about it they spin it in a way where they believe honestly or they try to make you believe that a signing or a manager will somehow change things or that Pep, I remember someone saying, if Pep leaves the league, it's different. If Klopp leaves, it's different. It's like, what? We're now hoping and wishing our rival team's um, best managers in their history of their, you know, of their, of their more than the history of their club leave to give us a chance. We're not trying to even to compete with them on the same level. We're just hoping that they may be implode so they can give us an opportunity to kind of be successful, which is why I think this league position that we're going to be in at the end of this season which will probably end up being our worst ever in history i think points tally as well we, we needed it because there's been many seasons where we finished second third we didn't deserve it and fans like myself have said it, it's a false position it's a false position and you get top reds coming at you saying yeah you finish where you meant to finish you finish where you deserve it's like no you don't sometimes you don't sometimes extenuating circumstances happen and you finish in a spot that you probably don't deserve because you're the most consistent out of a bad bunch and i think now finally the better teams have shown why they're better teams than us they basically pulled away you know what um chelsea is like 20 points i think near near enough away from man city at the top of the league and how much points are we away from flipping chelsea do you know what i mean if they're 20 points away from them and that's on the table they're not that bad you know in terms of what you see when they're playing you know on the pitch but if we're 20 more than 20 points away from man city on the table imagine how far we are away from them on the pitch so for to hear Rio say that is really disappointing, but also I'm not surprised because this is also the same Rio Ferdinand who came out when Newcastle fans were absolutely hating Mike, you know, Mike Ashley, they've always hated him, but you know, at, it was a very touchy moment. I remember he said something along the lines of, oh, if Newcastle fans are not happy, they should all put their money together and buy the club off of him. If it's that easy or something on those kind of lines, it was like, excuse me? So he's got prior for this sort of like cuck behavior when he um is getting his pockets lined. But as I've long said from the beginning, Man United X pros with the exception of maybe a couple, they're all basically working against the club. Some of them probably for their own selfish self-preservation sake, right? In terms of they don't want the club to be successful because it would somehow tarnish or diminish their own legacy. So the best way to kind of, you know, do that in a weird kind of um sigh up way is to basically you know spout as much shit as he is in public and then hope the club takes notice of it and doesn't make the right decision that could be one thing or it could be that they've been bought and sold because they get given benefits from the glazers they maybe are allowed access to players they would never ever get they're allowed to sit in the press box and all this sort of good stuff that maybe allows them to basically have a silent agreement where they don't go out of the way to criticize the glazers because if you're gonna criticize united over the last what 10 plus years the only thing that you can really, if you're a sensible person, you look at all the issues from managers to players. One of the things that's been constant throughout the entire time that we've been unsuccessful as a football club has been the owners. They've been the consistent factor in the club. They've given people money in you know weird ways, but overall their mismanagement of the club and how the football side of things is handled and who's in charge of it, who does what, that's been a mismanagement from the Glazers from day dot. So you can't not air them out. But again, if your pockets are getting lined by them, you're going to have to spin some sort of weird narrative to make it make sense. But the article says as follows. Referred has criticized Man United interim manager Ralph Ragnick. Ragnick has frequently been outspoken in press conferences and has criticized United's recruitment. While he has also hit out of the team's defending and athleticism. Right, so standard things you'd imagine, right, for a, a manager of someone of his repute would say. The 63 year old has one game left in charge of United, is continuing as a consultant for the club for the next two years. A former Man United defender says Ragnar should not be talking to openly about the club's problems. Like, oh my god, what nonsense. Speaking on his five YouTube show, Ferdinand said, I don't agree with the way that he's airing out the day laundry in public while he's still in the hot seat, while he's still there. It's nice sometimes for the fans, you get to, you get a bit of insight, but there's information that he's letting out that he shouldn't be. You're still on a job, man. Relax. Have some respect for the people around you. What are you talking about? The people around him don't have respect for the club. They've been dragging this club through the mud for the last 10 plus years. That's not respect. Taking dividends out of the club, you know, basically turning us into a cash cow, re-signing players on long contracts or renewing their contracts just because you see them as assets to add money to the overall bottom line of the main United stocks. Um, just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, it's nice sometimes for fans to, to make waves behind the scenes. What? 
push and pull just off of positions and outcomes behind the scenes with people. I've said this for a couple of weeks now. He's saying a lot of stuff and also distancing himself from responsibility. No, he has not. This is again nonsense from this guy. But he has yet to accept he has to accept some responsibility that the team has got worse since he's been there. For sure. Has his tenure been um a little bit of a letdown, especially for someone like myself who was gassed on all these, you know, TED talks that he was doing, sitting down, talking about his philosophy and what he's done, and other club fans or other clubs saying how much of a good job he did previously behind the scenes, blah 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 blah. Yes, of course, it's been a disappointment. But let's be honest, every manager at United post Sags Ferguson has failed overall. So if that's the case, why should we have believed that a manager who hasn't really managed at a top level for a m number of years, who's maybe somebody who's used to working with clubs that have a structure already there or sensible people that he can work with already working there so he can make the best of a bad situation, why did we expect him to work really, given what we know about the club? Especially now he was, you know, Ralph Ragnick was hired when Ed Woodward was still there. It's not even like he'd, he'd come, you know, like he was hired there when Matt Judge was still there, when those other scouts were still there. Like, ugh, I don't know. But again, this is this is what selling out does to you, isn't it? You start getting your line, your, your pockets lined by the owners. They start feeding you this claptrap about, you know, he's probably friends with Ed Woodward too in that same regard. Like, I don't understand, man. And Ragnick was left frustrated after his request for the club to sign a strike in January would have rejected so you bring in a football man and he says, you need a striker. He says, the club says, nah. Well, Ferdinand understands the Ragnar is disappointed. <clears throat> he feels like United need to intervene and stop him from having any more further press conferences. Oh my God. For all the great work he's done at previous clubs, a lot of that has been recruitment, bringing players in. He's been brought in to be a manager and manage his team to get Champions League football. He's failed in that department. Um, but then he's shifting blame all over the place and it's a bit that I really find a little bit disrespectful distasteful <sighs> Fair enough, just people behind the scenes at United will not be pleased with Ragnar Ragnarok saying he said he was brought into a consultant first and foremost and then to do stuff in the change room with the long term thinking that he'd be behind the scenes working out what is needed for the squad and had recruitment prepared the recruitment perspective he's offering up names of certain talents but that he feels like will be a huge impact immediately short term and long term he's not being backed and i think that's where the frustration lies he mentioned luis diaz vlaovic who was juventus but united didn't move he said the board declined moves because they're waiting for the summer i think his importance with that i think his impatience with that and his frustration at being born out of the interviews now i'll be honest if i was a club i wouldn't allow him to do an interview or press conference I don't want that stuff to be out in the media. If I'm the person who's running the club, I'd be saying, talk to us, we'll work it out. You might not agree with what I'm saying, but you're employed by us. These are the rules. Stay within the boundaries. <laughs> oh my God. You couldn't get a more clearer example of how our ex pros have been bought and sold. Same goes for Gary Neville and those guys. They had nothing to say about the club and this infrastructure and how things need to change when Ollie was in charge. They made it seem as if Ollie being in charge was legitimately going to get us back to the mountaintop. You know, at flipping Guy Neville on one side was saying how Harry Kane, if United signed Harry Kane to win the league, we signed Ronaldo, who's got a far better goal scoring record than a Harry Kane, and suddenly we still need more help. But then he won't point out or slag off his friend who's the manager because he's his friend, even though he was, you know, ex like in incredibly inadequate for that role, given what we know now. Um, at the moment, stuff he's saying there, there, you know, the night fresh. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really know what to say. Really, he's been bought and sold. It's sad to see as United legend, but again, I think I don't listen to any other ex pros when it comes to how the team and the club is being put together and what direction we should go in. And I think if any of us, this, if any of us, there's an indication where we shouldn't be listening to, and if ever there's a sign we shouldn't be listening to Rio Ferdinand, this should be it. This should be a sign that we all needed. Like you know, let that guy just you know chill out where he's needed, where he's not really gonna be a nuisance to anybody because it's too much. I can't do that what can you do next on list we have here news courtesy of the new york times regarding prominent youtube personality kevin samuels passing away at the age of 57 this came out of the blue actually over the weekend um i don't think anybody was aware that he had prior health conditions or whatnot um it wasn't something that he was maybe suffering from a long bout of illness or whatever it just kind of came out of the blue and um the news kind of took black to out say by storm over the weekend um, it was really interesting to kind of jump in a few Twitter spaces and hear people really, really laying into Kevin Samuels during his death. I think this has been the first time in a long time. I can't think of the last person this happened to. Maybe Jimmy Savile, but again, I don't think I was on Twitter that heavy, but I do remember people being on the street, like, you know, celebrating, people honking their horn and stuff when he passed away. But for the most part, 
even the most polarizing of figures or people that are not really that well liked on social media they usually get some level of you know respect silently or whatnot it may be when they do pass but this is the first time i saw people legitimately happy that somebody died who is kind of prominent on the internet or social media regards it maybe and it's a bit sobering i have to be honest because usually people are quite graceful respectful when someone passes away um because you know we've all kind of been there we've known people in our own families own friend groups who have passed away unexpectedly maybe through the same kind of cause of death that afflicted Sam kevin samuels and you can kind of you know, empathize with them right or you can empathize with the family members and whatnot but this is the first time everyone was like nah enough of that shit this guy is dead you know god don't bless the dead spit on his grave and you know whatever it may be and kick his flipping tombstone down it was mad to see to be honest um so let's continue here it says kevin samuels a youtube and instagram personality whose blunt lifestyle advice aimed at black men and women drew a legion of admiring followers and a chorus of detractors um who condemned his views as outdated and cruel died on thursday in atlanta he was 57 his death was announced by two friends and fellow youtube personalities dennis sperling and melanie king mr sperling who is also a lawyer identified himself as a family spokesman in the instagram post the atlanta police said he was found unresponsive on the floor of his apartment no cause was cited the story allegedly that i've seen online is that he was hooking up with this nurse who he met the day before and they were getting into it and i guess he was on top and he complained about his having heart pain and then in a flash he kind of collapsed the nurse gets up calls uh, medical services but by the time they come they try and perform cpr and he doesn't wake up again some would say he went out on top as he wanted to you know joke included there some would say there's something fishy going on there because the nurse's background is to be to be confirmed and whatnot but it just does sound seem like a really unfortunate accident um or you know series of events that basically led to this it's not i don't think there's anything more deeper or malicious involved there personally i would say um describing himself as an image consultant mr samuels had transformed in recent years from a personal stylist into a social media celebrity who built his following on an image in plain spoken hyper masculine authority um usually wearing a finely tailored suit the approach brought him more than a million followers on youtube and now instagram and many of his supporters viewed him as taking outrageous stands that are now called that they, they would call traditional view values which is interesting because i would also call them traditional values and you wouldn't imagine just somebody who's very traditional to garner that level of hate from people in society but you know things have changed and moved i don't really know much about kevin simons i think when i first saw him online i incorrectly assumed he was like a black jordan peterson but he's not he's not as sophisticated or nuanced i'd say as jordan peterson maybe a bit of a blowhard in that respect but for the most part he seemed like somebody who like most content creators out there was trying to find his lane and he did obviously find his lane in the end but it seemed that somebody that was trying to throw as many things he can at the board you know on online image consultant styling whatever it may be called um what's that thing called um, when you do your manners and stuff i've got that thing um what's that it's a term for it but you know what i mean right and then if i'm not mistaken he did get into a period in his time during his content where he was focused primarily on giving the harsh reality or the harsh truth to black men you know kind of coming up in terms of how they should approach women and how they should approach their life but for whatever reason that stuff didn't get him as much attention as when he suddenly turned the lens onto the women especially because some of them were on camera right he'd get he'd do this whole live calling thing where you'd call in for help and advice on your relationships or sex advice and he'd give you kind of his unfiltered truth usually through the lens of like you know i'm an alpha male i'm a successful guy i'm a high value guy all this sort of buzzwords that's nonsense you see hear people talk about in the manosphere and for whatever reasons those videos really really caught steam and kind of got him everywhere and um through those exchanges i guess what people most people kind of made their mind up on how he was as a person because they saw a black man basically get on online and going out of his way to basically tear down other black women when it comes to them you know being basically emotionally vulnerable talking about stuff that's basic stuff stuff that maybe they shouldn't be talking about i don't know but i guess the optics of it didn't look too great but if we're being sensible and we're being quite adult about it I don't necessarily think the reaction to him makes sense because all it was was a difference of opinion it feels like he had one view of how he saw relationships sex um jobs uh, you know in uh, inter flipping sexual relations whatever it may be is it not interpersonal relations between men and women in general 
he saw those things very differently to how most people would see them online. I think most people have those views that he has offline, but of course, most people are afraid to share them online because you don't want to get screamed at by the horde of people who don't really subscribe to that way of thinking and think the world should move on and things have changed, blah, 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 blah. So I don't really think it's that radical, that crazy to tell a woman who's a single mother that maybe if she's trying to go out on a dating pool, or she's trying to go out then date again, maybe trying to aim for a guy who's 27 with a six pack and earns a million a year isn't realistic because most likely he's going to be trying to look for girls younger than that person, right? It's just the facts. Is it something nice to say? No. Would you go out of your way to cross over the street and tell a woman on her own with a couple of kids, hey, you're not shit, you're not going to find a partner? No, you wouldn't. But these women are calling into his show and to have somewhat of a tit for tat, a little bit of a debate, a little bit of a powwow. So in that respect, I think, you know, the platform is a platform. If you know what he's like, don't call into the show. Um, I've seen many video clips of other women actually giving it to Kevin Samuels and actually winning that kind of verbal sparring match. So it wasn't always one-sided, but again, you know, when you have a narrative to spin, you're just going to get out all the worst clips that you can of somebody and make them look horrible. The only thing I will say about him as well, just to end this point would be, because he's created so much content online and spoken so often, there are some clips out there that are absolutely insane and I think pretty much indefensible. There's one I saw of him talking about having a hypothetical conversation with a lady saying, oh, if if you if you're with somebody new and this lady had her own kid and um, the dude happened to be in a shower and the little kid happened to walk past the door whilst the, whilst the, whilst the shower room, whilst the door was open, and a the kid then come back and told you something weird happened with me and your boyfriend, would you all make you think it was a soul or a pedo or something like that? And I was like, what? Guess, guess what? What kind of question is this to even ask? What what do you want to get away get from this? This is like really, really bizarre. So that one I was really uncomfortable with. I don't understand what the context, there was no context to it because I listened to a longer clip also. It just didn't make any sense why that stuff needed to be said. I just don't understand that one. And then the other one I saw that I thought was a bit weird. What was the one I thought was a bit weird? I forgot which one it was. Was him talking about himself? But I don't know. There's a few clips out there that you can't really defend when it comes to Kevin Samuels. But that's usually the the problem that happens with people who talk so often online especially ones who are trying to find themselves they find their lane sorry you end up trying to say so many crazy things to try and garner some reaction and get some sort of you know virality going for your career that you end up saying things you probably don't even mean or believe in all honesty um but yeah like i said it's been really interesting and weird to see people legitimately celebrating his death but it also is sobering because i think in life unfortunately or fortunately we only get one shot at first impression you don't really get any do-overs at life in general so sometimes even at work someone can come in who starts and just the way that they pack their lunch the way that they walk to the toilet the way that they close the door the way they turn the tap on the way that they say certain words could just get on your nerves to a point where you just don't care anymore i don't like this person they haven't said nothing to you, you don't know from anywhere but just one little slight that they do can make you completely turned off to them as a person as a human to the point where you're not going to give them a chance to even try to get into good graces so if you're kevin samuels and you're somebody online and no one even knows you to begin with they don't owe you a benefit of the doubt they're they're allowed to make up their mind on you if they want to and if you give them a reason to trust me they're going to take it and they took it and they ran with it and people are legitimately you know dancing on his grave as we speak at the moment which is pretty mad and then of course the saddest thing of it is the mum isn't it right the mum i think is one of the only family members i think that's alive i've heard speak in public she said she found out only when it was on social media so she wasn't even contacted directly first she had to find out through social that he had passed away and then imagine usually when someone's famous passes away it's all over social media so you can just quickly search their name and see what's happening so she most likely saw all the hate and all the abuse that he was getting online before she could even process her feelings of how she felt about her son passing away in such a tragic and awful circumstances but it's quite funny i saw a meme going out there saying that how you know he was you know deriding black women saying that how you're gonna die alone at 35 with no one to love you blah blah, blah. and he was 57 unmarried dying in a condo you know or an apartment sorry with the woman he just met the day before in the house i think supposedly someone said a line that he didn't actually own which is crazy too um and then the money thing gets involved two people start speaking about it. maybe it's a go fund me to get self about it. it's just it's just a sad situation all, all around you know what i mean really is a sad situation but again like i said first impressions do count and sometimes i feel like i don't mind this energy i really don't 
I think sometimes when people try and do that whole fake respectful thing that they don't really mean, it kind of pisses me off. And, you know, there's people in, in, in all our lives, I'm sure, if we heard that they happened to pass away in a very tragic way, that we would absolutely sleep like an absolute baby the day of. So let's not kid ourselves, do you know what I mean? Especially people that we don't actually know. You don't owe anybody that courtesy of kind of being sad that they passed away. We all pass away at the end of the day. It is what it is. Um, but I guess just in the, in the current state of things, I've never really seen people legitimately dance on someone's grave like this. It's pretty, pretty mad to see. Um, you'd think that he legitimately did something to people physically in, in a way that, you know, is um, you can't really come back from. But to just have different opinions on relationships and sex and stuff and to be that hated is crazy. But again, maybe there's more things to him that I'm not really aware of. But it is what it is, isn't it? Moving on from that one, we have this funny news actually courtesy of the Joe Biden podcast I'm not going to play because they always strike down videos and whatnot but the Joe Biden podcast a podcast that I would, was a big fan of for a very very long time that ended in very unfortunate way mostly because of Joe's incredible ego um entitlement um lack of respect whatever it may be led to the, in, the original show or original lineup kind of splintering into two the other two boys, Rory and Moore, have set up their podcast and then the Joe Budden basically got Ice and Ish to basically replace them. And since then, you would say both people have kind of, you know, landed on their feet. New Rory and Moore basically announced that they had a podcast deal that they announced, I think it was like 20 million deal, where they get to do three shows, not two shows a week, sorry, um, with some live bits here and there, some skits they do here and there, but they've they've approached it pretty well, I think. Um, even more, who's kind of been boring at the beginning, but he's kind of I think felt his groove or found his groove over the last couple of weeks. They've added some good co host type people behind the scenes who do really well, like Baby D, the Marathon flipping um New Royal Mar has done a great job. Um also again the job on the podcast has landed on their feet too. Ice and Ish have been good replacements for Rory Mar on the show. And so far, they've been okay. Patreon's popping. It is what it is. But there's no denying the magic of the show has been lost with that, that without that original lineup. And you'd imagine doing a live show. Part of the reason that live show was so successful is because there were different hives for the different coasts, right? There was a Parks hive. There was a hive for Ma or half hive for Rory, Joe, some other people else, and some other ones involved too. Did maybe the booking and the camera behind the scenes and Screen Man. They all had a little hive. So part of the experience, again, I didn't go to a Joe Brandon podcast live show. I wish I did. Now, you know, of course, the original lineup is broken up. Part of the appeal of going there, you would imagine would be that you get to see all these people that you're fans of, right, in real life. Um, similar to seeing a reality TV show, you know, people come through at your local nightclub or something. I imagine it be the same sort of thing, right? You know these people because you watch a lot of content about them, listen to them all the time, so you want to see them, meet them in real life. So it didn't really make any sense to me when he announced a tour anyway because it's like, are Ice and Ish really going to come come you know get people out of their houses to buy tickets to go somewhere like it just doesn't make any sense and obviously you know it's been proven to be true because as of the most recent episode joe budden announced that the podcast tour that they put on which they filmed an entire skit for has now been cancelled um they had to cancel it because of i think low ticket sales but again Joe would never admit that. So he basically said the climate's not right. All these buzzwords that don't really make any sense. It's funny because I'm sure if he heard somebody else saying that, like a chance rapper or somebody else very prominent, and they said something along the lines of, oh, we didn't sell because of the climate, he'd be absolutely clowning and dunking on them in his podcast. But because it's him, we're meant to have more sympathy and look at things, you know, with more charitable eyes and whatnot. But the truth remains, those guys just don't sell tickets the way that you know the original lineup so tickets and fundamentally even bef even outside of that i think part of being a successful content creator in some way shape or form especially when you want to do live shows you really need people to like you you really need to be someone that people can root for they can rally behind and i feel like over the years joe has become such an unlikable person especially in a community of people with people you say kind of let's say the urban community i feel like we give a shit more if you're not a nice person you probably won't get that far whereas i think if you've got you know let's say a predominantly mixed audience where you've got a few whites in there they probably won't give a shit what kind of scumbag stuff you do they're just here for the show but i think because he has turned off so many people over the years especially with this latest stunt with the new rory and more i saw rory and more kind of getting kicked off the show due to them basically asking for more accounting and details on how the splits were being divvied up 
I think people just completely turned off to him as a person. I think that might have impacted the show way more than he has realized, than I have realized as a fan. And maybe as other fans have basically realized, maybe subconsciously people are like, oh, they picked a side. We're going to Rory and Mo, we're going to Joe. No, I think some people just got turned off to him as a person. I know I did. I know I find it very difficult to listen to any content with his voice now because it just grates me knowing that how, you know, how he basically scummed his friends in such a really disrespectful, weird way because he legitimately thought he was the number one reason why people came to the show. And, you know, now that the podcast has been cancelled, sorry, the tour, it brings to mind that um, that uh, one of those last episodes before the guys broke up where they were having some sort of back and forth, maybe retelling the argument of that they had the prior day. And I think Moss is something under the lines of, oh, one of the things that really annoyed him was when Joe one time at a live show said in the green room, oh, I've got them, I've got them lined up around the corner, right? Meaning the people queuing up to see the show. And Mo had to correct him and said, no, 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 we have them wrapped around the corner. We do. And I think he says it was a little slight, but it was something that he kept in the back of his head. Like, why would you say you have them wrapped around? It's a, pod, it's a podcast, right? There's all of us on here. And I think fundamentally, you know, to its foundation, to its core, I don't really think Joe honestly believes that those guys contribute as much as the fans say that they contribute to the overall success of the show. He generally thinks that he's still the main reason why people tune in. He might be somewhat right because of the show still going, because, you know, you'd imagine if those guys were as important as maybe some of us think, maybe the show wouldn't be around. I'm not really too sure. That doesn't make no sense. But in terms of going to the next level and getting people to leave their homes and pay for tickets and travel to places, you really do need to be likable and have people that people can kind of get behind. And with Ison ish being somewhat regular dudes and friends of Joe, but, you know, to the grand scheme of things, no one really knows them like that. It was basically a hard sell. It's a big step down for the original lineup to go to watch Ison ish talk on the stage about whatever they're going to talk about. But, um, yeah, there is some sweet justice to it all. But in actuality, as being a fan, I'm not really stoked on it i've always said as much as i dislike the guy i still want him to win i still want him to get one bag you know just one big hefty bag just as like a kind of thank you for all the work he has done in terms of laying the ground for that whole space of podcasts that kind of emerge off the back of the dirt button podcast right i really do think he deserves that but considering the way kevin hart spoke about him when the pod broke up at first and whatever maybe i get the feeling that people in the industry like the real money men the people that really press the button and get you deals and whatnot i just don't think they like the guy like they don't want to do business with him he's turned them off in a way where that probably avenue isn't going to open up anytime soon which is a shame like i said i still think he deserves a bag um but you know it is what it is the gig is a gig as you say um he shook the tree and this is what he got Okay, move on here. What else do we have? Let's move on to this one. This is pretty funny. Um, this is courtesy of D Shade Bar, and it's talking about if you don't have money or don't agree, sorry, if you don't have money, don't agree to step out to the motive. And motive, if you're not familiar with UK slang, is basically a slang word for going out, going to a party, whatever it may be. So let's hear what these guys have to say about this whole thing, and we're gonna move on. If you don't have money, don't agree to step out to the motive because I'm not your guardian, bro. I'm not your dad. On behalf of the man, them, if you don't have money, still come to the motive, bro. We want you to come, bro. Trust me. If you don't want to buy a drink, it's calm, fam. I'm not going to finish this Bacardi anyway. So I may as well top up your thing. You know what I'm saying? Bro, it's probably better for my own health that I do that anyway. So you're doing me a favor. And if it's a cab or whatever, we can chip in, fam. Man, them can chip in. It's calm. Because I'm not trying to see one of the guys sit it out just because I'm money. Or some dumb reason like that. Like, I'm trying to see all the man them litty in the subs. Having a lit time. You know what I'm saying? Bro. Don't listen to this guy, fam. Trust me. Come to the motive, bro. We want you to come. <laughs> bro, trust me. Now, this guy. I don't know what this guy's talking about, though, fam. Like, if the man them's not invited, we're getting them plus one. And if you want to kick him out, you have to kick all of us out. It doesn't work like that, fam. We come as one and we leave as one that's nice to say don't get me wrong but i think as a dude and as a man or as a kid coming up you need to have these sobering moments where you're basically put in a position where you generally don't have the funds to go to things and you have to make the adult decision to just say you know what i'm going to sit this one out 
not today because ultimately no one wants to be beholden by somebody when you're stepping out you don't want to have to depend on somebody what what time you're gonna go home what you can drink what you can eat like it just isn't fun like we've all done it at least once before where we've been dependent on somebody for a lift or whatever maybe and it's annoying it's annoying already if it's a lift right it's their car it's annoying already if it's an uber because it's just an app you just have to call the thing beckon it and it'll come to you i can only imagine what it's like going out with somebody else's money or with somebody buying the drinks for you that must gonna be like a hell i can only imagine that'll be hell so there's nothing really that i kind of ever encouraged and i think it was easier for me growing up because i never really had money in that way my parents didn't really have much money they weren't really you know ego or happy to see me go out to parties in the first place so the fact that i didn't have money to go was probably a good thing i got to stay at home and keep myself out of trouble or whatnot but it did also give me an appreciation for when i did able when i was able to kind of come into some sort of money that i could use that to then go do the things that i wanted to do right or go and kind of enjoy myself the way i wanted to enjoy myself and it also made the events themselves to be that much more memorable and something you can actually savor as opposed to just going to everything having people fund your motives fund your nights out and then you not be able to kind of appreciate them in any way shape or form i don't really think that makes any any sense and unfortunately especially if you're from an quote-unquote urban environment in the uk going out in groups especially there's no real guarantee you're going to get in anywhere so it's not like you're even missing out on many things maybe it's different if you go to like a house party don't get me wrong you maybe figure that one out but in terms of going to a nightclub especially in the you know in some you know majority caucasian places especially spots or whatnot it can be difficult to get in if you're all with your friends and you all happen happen to be non-black it's going to be a situation anyway so the last thing you want to do is to go out to those kind of places with one idea to go to a party do not get in because you would demand them and then suddenly now everyone's like oh let's go to this other place it's going to be far more expensive and way out your budget they of money that you didn't have in the first place anyway it just doesn't make any sense i think it's okay to miss things it's okay to like be without it's not it's not like bad to be without stuff not be able to get the trainers not be able to afford to take a girl out not be able to afford to see this guy whatever it may be it's good you need that it's a good lesson in life it kind of teaches you how to hustle it teaches you how to be more resourceful it teaches you ever having to save i remember there were times in when i was growing up where i would get like a pound a day in school right one pound a day equivalent to one dollar and i'd sometimes save it up for the entire week just so i could take that money out of me on a weekend because i knew i was going out on a weekend so i'd just be like you know what i'm just gonna come i'm just gonna firm it i'm just gonna eat school lunch because i got free school meals at the time and then i'm just gonna use this money as like going out money to like you know be able to buy something and again this is also under the guise that i would be doing a flipping fugazi travel card so i can basically you know wave that in front of the driver and get on the buses for free so i'd be going out with the tightest of budgets in the first place and and again that was a fun experience even i only had five pound or ten pounds to my name um i far more enjoyed those nights out than trying to depend on my friend that has a bit more money than everybody else because he's i don't know he's doing flipping credit card scams or he has family with a bit of with a bit of dough in their in their accounts or whatnot i just don't think it makes any sense personally i really don't get it i've never been a fan of it um I'm, again i'm not somebody that depends on people like that i never understood people who only go out if their friend's driving somewhere that's weird someone paying for your uber to go out somewhere i think that's strange it's all really bizarre and i think there is something to be said for the kinship and the connection that you do have with your friends when you're able to what's that word to people like you say that's not giving money contribute when you're able to contribute to things when you're able to go out with your friends you know go out to a nice place just pay the bill without arguing about what side you didn't eat or what drink you didn't have there is something else it elevates your relationship to another level when you can do that even sometimes when you could take your friend out and pay for the entire thing yourself mate it does do something so if those things are positives and i can only imagine the negatives involved with being the one friend that's always dependent on people that's always relying on someone for a lift it's just long like why would you want to do that to yourself it doesn't make any sense um i think it's very bizarre very weird very strange energy and like i said i think ultimately missing things is okay it's not a bad thing to miss things Just miss things from time to time it makes you appreciate them when you do finally get them you know i remember me going to the first proper proper rave rave when i was in uni and stuff like thinking rah this is it do you know what i mean I've, this is what i've been waiting for for time because now i've got some money in pocket working retail making seven dollars i mean seven pounds an hour feeling like an absolute boss you know what i mean like this is it 
But if I was able to have everything beforehand, would I have appreciated it the same way? I don't think so. It's nice to, again, it's nice to have these kind of boys. I wish I did have a friend like this guy, yeah, the second one, where maybe he get, is legitimately happy to see you out. Like, even if it means you have to split a flipping Bacardi, all right, cool. He's going to lips it. You're going to lips it. It is what it is. I just don't think that's fun for me. It just isn't fun, personally. I just can't do it. The amount of things I missed back in the day, monumental, even to this day. If, if if I don't have enough money to do the things that I need to do to get a trim to do this do that I just won't go it just doesn't make any sense um there's enough parties and motives out there for you to kind of you know recover and catch up on when you do finally get into a bit of good fortune and again it doesn't take much either it's just priorities also you don't, it doesn't need to be like I was again I was saying I was earning seven pound an hour working retail and I was still able to go to most parties especially if you're living at home it's not that difficult to do oh just save some money have some foresight especially if things coming up like you know what I mean don't indulge in a, don't indulge in Greg's during the week I don't know save a bit of money so you can buy yourself a couple of cans of beer or you know a couple of magnums whatever it may be like it's not that difficult to do it really isn't but you know maybe I'm in the minority there maybe I'm in the minority moving on we have this story Curtis Shea as well this is absolutely crazy I don't know who this, who this girl is but hopefully you know get well soon and whatnot this is Curtis the Shea Burrow says Miss are fabulous admitted to hospital after nitrous oxide usage um this is the caption youtuber and rapper miss r fabulous was recently admitted to hospital following alleged use of nitrous oxide it is rumored that her appendix had burst inside her body however this has not been confirmed sorry to laugh but this is maddening this is what i mean about brits man it doesn't matter what color creed race sexual orientation we just do the most this is the reason why we have so many arcane stupid nonsensical rules in places that don't make any sense there's all these dumb rules you're like why have you got a rule for that because some idiot took it too far this is what always happens they had to bring in a law to stem the amount of nitrous oxide that was being consumed by kids and sold on the streets and stuff i remember once me and a couple of boys that i used to go out with him in the whole Hackneywick like warehouse rave scene um I was, well, it was a couple of lads i bumped into from time to time and then i didn't see him for ages i bumped into him again I was like, hey how you been I in ages oh yeah i got locked up in there. i was in i was inside for a couple of months why because i was selling nitrous oxide imagine that's worse than flipping getting nabbed at tesco express for nicking flipping kinder buenos or some shit absolute loser isn't it like absolute loser you can do them to some level right where people don't really care if you're doing them like for whatever reason you could probably you know take a nitrous to the face on the street and not really have anyone looking at you weird more than you could maybe take a line on the street of care or coke or something it makes no sense but still people just go overboard you can buy these canisters on, on social on sorry, social media on ebay on you know chat sites i'm a chat groups i'm assuming too easy to get hold of just enjoy it in moderation but now nah straight to the head let me let my appendix burst and maybe nearly die for this nitrous oxide high which isn't even that great and it's and it's even worse when you see people who are like older like this girl looks like she might be under 25 so fair enough you know you're gonna do dumb things at that age but when you see older lads or older girls outside shubs and clubs or whatnot just taking a nitrous to the face and ballooning and whatnot or holding them in pictures thinking you look cool yo that is some loser behavior um she said uh, what is it? her sister wrote in a statement she's in a very bad way and can't even walk and she'll be in hospital for a week and will be undergoing surgery and up there miss our fabulous herself stated that her surgery went well oh my god this operation was a big one but god gave me thanks but god give what but big one but give god thanks who god bless no man can curse i love when people who are religious get into these self-inflicted situations and then try and use god as an escape route like to excuse their tomfoolery it's like nah mate god couldn't god can look down upon you and say you're a waste of time you took a nitrous to the face what do you do jab in your earlobe and something and hold your nose closed like what are you doing it says yeah miss our fabulous um this is a comment from what is this from is this from youtube or something i don't know it says hey everyone this is a renny youngest sister <laughs> she wanted to let you know that she will pull through this hurdle renny hasn't been feeling well the last few weeks one of the reasons for not being consistent on youtube there's been so much messages sent to my mother and sandra she's in a very bad way she can't even walk she'll be in hospital for a week due to surgery at this point it isn't ready to share what was happening of course because it's embarrassing it is a shock to us um but we asked for your patience and support right now um i'll be dropping a well i'll be dropping my sister her phone tomorrow so she'll see your messages thank you for supporting my sister and our family how embarrassing 
I learn it all when I've been told. So I learn it all when I told the doctors what I'd done. I only found out it kills the cells and takes away your good cells. I love this excuse. And this is like um, Octavian when he jumped on um, um, harsh reality gnosis, right? And he's like, oh, I didn't know certain drugs was bad. <laughs> like, what? All right, mate. He said, okay, also certain vapes aren't good. Cool. Now, now you're getting taught lessons to, to somebody who got put themselves in hospital inhaling nitrous is now trying to teach us something makes sense also certain vapes aren't good i only found this out here but i would do an in-depth video of surgery went well of course if there's anything content creators can monetize it's personal flipping tragedy right you take a nitrous to the face you shove it up your rectum you get put yourself put yourself in hospital you nearly die she might be again she might be the main breadwinner of her family so you might ruin your entire family's life with you know your inability to earn and then of course you know in a good way to kind of save yourself you then start telling people how they should live their lives in terms of not vaping and then you're like you know what don't worry i will explain it all in the video hi guys surgery went well didn't die it's like what you are tapped but yeah i don't i don't like i said Brit, brits are mad sometimes i think to myself oh why can't we be more like berlin why we don't have clubs open until 4, 8 a.m in the morning on a tuesday and all this sort of stuff it's like this is why because just just imagine just try and close your eyes and picture what shortage would be like if we had clubs open until monday morning at 6 a.m just imagine what it'll be like oh mike just imagine just for one moment what that would be like it's already hell on earth from Liverpool Street all the way to flipping Dawson, right? That entire strip is probably worse now. I don't really go out there too often, but back in the day when I used to go, it was crazy. It's probably worse than it's ever been because it's so popular now. Just imagine if they had clubs open until 8 a.m. in that entire strip, what it would be like with the concentration of people, the traffic, the noise, the drinking in the street, the getting out of the club. Just imagine how crazy it would be. The guys are already freaking out with this nitrous oxide, just going to what? Going to rooftop bars. Like, you know, going to little street food things and, you know, little calm situations where the DJ, DJ playing in the background, you can have a little pulled pork sandwich and whatnot, you know, chill out, maybe smoke a couple of things and move on. Nah, let's just take this to the face to the point where my appendix burst. Like, <laughs> she must have been drinking this stuff, I swear down, or had it in like a face mask, right? Like, God almighty, absolute savage, isn't it? Get well soon, I guess, isn't it? sometimes if you don't sometimes people i don't know i don't really know but anyway quickly get a charger first because i don't want this to flip and die on me bear with me one second why did they do that for that's weird isn't it hmm interesting why did it move like that was it me maybe it wasn't okay cool let's put it back there cool is that all right yeah that's good isn't it that's far better bear with me one second okay let's continue here let's continue we have this um this news has come out of course i think most of you are aware jack Harlow's album came out over the weekend jack harlow jack harlow and it's been an interesting reception from people online in terms of what they feel about the album personally for me i enjoyed the production more than i enjoyed him as an artist i still feel like he's probably not at the level that the attention he's getting online or the marketing out there for him could justify it feels like a little bit of a disconnect there um but i do appreciate how he takes himself seriously as an artist he's clearly somebody who's trying to get to a certain level who's clearly trying to who's clearly also in this as well as an upcoming rapper who's prioritizes bodies of work as opposed to singles because for whatever reason maybe it's because of the streaming era i don't know what it is but a lot of that is coming up you feel as if like they just want to be people who create moments in terms of singles like let me have a single that can define a summer define a period in the year whatever it may be but they're not actually trying to create bodies of work in terms of albums that can be looked back on and people say oh yeah this was a great project this he really tried something interesting here da, 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 da. they don't really do that it's all just single 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 throwaways and it's hard to kind of rally behind them because usually the single that you like by the time it by the time they get to putting out an album it sounds nothing like that single do you know what I mean? it just moves too quickly moves too slow it's a bit mad but i do appreciate that he clearly is a student of the game here's somebody that wants to you know leave a good imprint but i feel like in this whole album the production really carried him and i feel like 
clearly people behind the scenes or in the industry see this guy as like a big deal because it the album does sound very expensive it sounds very well mixed um the production is really top notch I'm, I'm assuming those beats are not easy or cheap to get especially some of the ones that have a second breakdown towards the end of the track there's about four or five of them that are just amazing how it switched up in the middle i'd imagine some of those aren't really cheap and he did them somewhat justice but i think if we're being really picky i'd say maybe some of those beats were wasted on him i would say personally now is this an album that i would say is completely garbage no there is obviously room for improvement there is a lot of kind of cool bits in there that can be um plucked to pu pulled apart and you can maybe see him kind of developing the sound especially the features from pharrell drake justin timberlake and wayne those four or five tracks alone could you could see him taking those sounds and going in an interesting direction with these albums because i feel like especially nowadays with the competition out there you kind of if you are going to be that body of work person you have to bring it you can't just be doing the same sound and regurgitating even someone like a drake is sort of in that weird space now where people feel like he still hasn't got a classic because he's so refined that one sound that he does but now people just want more they want to challenge you i think the baby has something similar right the baby came out and he had that amazing run with these singles but people just felt like he just sounded the same all the time and it just got a bit repetitive and i think with jack harley he's got a similar sort of problem as well the, the his cadence and how he raps although it's really clear and um very somewhat sophisticated i don't know what that no sophistication there's there's a there's a real efficiency of words that he has where he doesn't fill in he doesn't fill bars up with words just for the sake of it. He just says what he wants to say and kind of keeps it moving. Let's the song breathe. I can respect that. But I have to be honest, too, he doesn't really have much to say. I mean, it's not the most interesting album in the world in terms of getting to know him as a person. So that maybe is a part of it, too. And I don't know, man. Like I said, I just think the marketing around him and everything doesn't really match the talent overall. But would I say the album's garbage? No. So hearing people online going out of the way to say it's garbage, it's garbage, it doesn't make any sense. Um, you look at something like a Churchill Downs, that song obviously leaked before with Drake. It's absolutely phenomenal. One of the best Drake, you know, verses in a while. It's also funny because the one we heard leaked and the one that's got turned into the album is different because clearly Jack Harlow wanted to add a verse at the end of his verse because, you know, Drake comes and absolutely kills, steals the show. So he obviously, you know, took some notes there and redid his verse, which is, takes a lot of courage to do, considering how Flames Drake's verse was. But I think a lot of the reason why people don't really feel a connection with him might be to do with this post I saw on the Who Is Celebrity Vice account on Instagram, which is, again, one of my favorite accounts on Instagram, where I wouldn't go as far as saying this, but there is some sort of, it feels like, concerted effort to make him be the drake era parent to make him be the next big rap superstar and it feels like we don't really get a say in it as fans we don't really get a say in whether or not he is that guy because he just happens to be around them all the time taking pictures and you know gets interviewed by all the biggest places and gets all the biggest placements and it, i don't know it's just you feel as if it's inevitable when really you'd want to be led to believe that you are playing a part in this guy's career basically getting to where it's going to get to it just feels like it's it's been too well um politicked and trained i don't know there's something about it that feels a bit artificial what the same industry plant ish because it's, he was obviously somebody that's been grinding on the come up for a while but it does feel as if like they are making him be a star as opposed to the fans choosing this is our guy we're going to elevate it just feels a little bit like that but this caption from who celebrity vice is hilarious it says it's a picture of um Jack Harlow at the Kentucky Derby. I think he was there with um Drewski and Drake, of course. And I think they're also filming a video there, maybe for the song they've got. Uh, it says, yeah, it's going to be a long summer with um, Colonel Sanders a rap, Jack Harlow, right? Imagine calling him the Colonel Sanders a rap. Absolutely crazy. Of course, because of the suit, but it's hilarious. One thing Drake has taught us collectively, and that's the pop culture, loves a good gimmick. The hype trains full steam ahead. Obviously, Colonel Sanders a rap would be like, you know, him being a cultural vulture, and maybe Colonel Sanders basically pop popularizing um fried chicken in a very commercial whitewashed way as opposed to maybe you know the people who maybe originated that that way of kind of cooking fried chicken the kentucky fried way 
were maybe people from down south who are maybe black or indigenous and they didn't get a chance to shine but he took that and was able to kind of popularize it in a commercial way maybe he's looking at him the same way but to be fair also who celebrity vice isn't the biggest fan of drake so anything connected with that guy kind of gets a hot um hot amount of time obviously reese lafraire didn't like the comment but i think it's a fair assessment to make in it but yeah the similarity is uncanny but i'm sure it was on purpose anyway to be fair anyway the suit i don't think they do these things you know by coincidence i'm sure it was on purpose um the Jack Harlow glow up and yeah that, that's the thing as well to, that can be rooted for the fact that he has as a young man decided to make some really um monumental you know lifestyle changes in order to kind of attain his goal of he being like the next big person up there the fact that he's quit drinking he's clearly been working out a lot that's a big deal for somebody his age you know you assume he's like what mid-20s he's just getting you know started maybe he's been in this a long time but in terms of kind of popping and becoming that guy he's probably going to get so many things thrown at him you know part of the process is maybe going to events and getting handed drinks and having powers and stuff the fact that he's decided nah i'm going to cut that out of my life I'm going to focus on the art is crazy but it also goes to show the kind of single mindedness he has so it's something to kind of get behind and rally um i see his video maybe he's got a clip of him or how he looks now yeah see completely changed into person it's really really good cleaned up and whatnot but yeah I, I i get it man people see it and it's just a bit it's a bit much in it like this video of him obviously being carried uh, around the kentucky Bill because the floor is too muddy they want to get his nice expensive shoes dirty obviously being carried by a bonkers bunch of black men which again very symbolic but hey it is what it is um i don't know i get it i understand why people feel as if like it's been it's just a big dupe but i also do feel like maybe this is just the way things work out in life, isn't it? Maybe someone comes along whose face fits, vibe fits, and is able to kind of vibe and chill these guys and, you know, be able to do their own thing. And, you know, it works out the way it works out. And ultimately, anyway, if his music isn't good, no matter what amount of finagling they do behind the scenes with the numbers and whatnot, if his music isn't good, it just isn't good. So there's only so far you can go with this whole machine pressing the button industry plant ish sort of stuff but i get it i understand i understand the reservations behind it but again the album i kind of enjoyed it i thought it was somewhat enjoyable but i think the production definitely carried it more so as opposed to the actual l lyrics themselves i thought little wayne's feature on this was absolutely crazy on poison um i didn't like justin timberlake on parent trap personally churchill downs obviously the banging movie style was obviously amazing do a leap i'm a big fan of the singles first class yep of course top 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 tune but overall it didn't really tell me much more about the kid to be completely honest but maybe i'm in the minority there let's move on quickly we've got to speak about this coach the bbc news says here nick cave announces death of his son jeffro age 30 absolute tragic news man um i remember bumping into or, or cut not bumping into um cutting paths crossing paths with nick cave in brighton one year ages ago he looked phenomenal he had like a baby blue um suit on like just looked incredible just incredible from afar just like you know see somebody okay that guy is somebody famous or special you know what i mean it's like, oh shit it's nick cave um from afar and of course later on i learned that he has he'd been living in brighton for many many years so it makes complete sense why he was over there um and i remember just a couple of years later that then that um obviously one of his sons i think at 15 at the time tragically passed away um some crazy accident where they fell off something a building or a cliff i don't know what it was i remember thinking god damn I'm, that was one of the sons that he was with at the time so i can only imagine what that is like as a parent i mean having to bury one of your kids and then having to bury another one it's just <sighs> tragic so yeah, nick kev has announced the death of his elder son jeffro lansby um with much sadness i can confirm that my son jeffro has passed away he said we'll be grateful for family privacy at this time lansby who worked as an actor and model had recently been jailed for a violent attack on his mother Bu uh Bu uh, lansby at a home in melbourne australia his death comes less than five less sorry less than seven years after cave's son arthur died age 15 after falling from a cliff an inquest heard that the teenager had taken lsd before the fall which the coroner ruled as accidental cave letter wrote that the vastness of the grief and sad he felt would offer with him would stay with him all the time he says i hear him talk to me parent me guide me though he may not be here the musician who's best known for his work as a bad seeds and later moved to los angeles with his wife because brighton had just become too sad he said we did however return once we realized that regardless of where we lived we just took our sadness with us fucking hell yeah there he is isn't it 
R.I.P. Jeffro. Jeffro was born in Melbourne, 1981, and was the only nerd that the cave was his father at age eight. Um, he began modelling after being scouted in the city and had acting roles in 20, 2007, Cor Corby, and 2011, My Little Princess, which starred Isabella Hubbard. He also had worked more recently as a photographer. He had also been released on bail Melbourne uh, Remand Centre last Thursday, the 5th of May, after the magistrate instructed that he must undergo substance abuse treatment and avoid contact with his mother for the next two years. Previously, a court heard that Mbue found her son at the foot of her door at 7th of March, 2022, and let him stay for the night. The following morning, they had an argument during what Lansbury need the mother in the face, leaving her with a bloody and bruised. Jesus Christ. He fled to a local pub and asked him to call the police. The court was told. Lansbury's lawyer, um, Sean Gaffes, said that he had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, which had affected his judgment. He had previously spent time in jail in 2018 for a number of violent attacks on his then girlfriend. So, not the, you know, not the nicest human in the world, but again, RIP to Jeffro Lansby and Force Guy to Nick Caveman. Losing two of your kids in such tragic circumstances, I can only imagine how it must hurt, man. I can only imagine. Next on list here, what do you have? Oh, yeah, just this funny news. This is courtesy of the Bergheim subreddit. If you're not already registered on there, definitely get yourself over there if you're a fan of dance music and clubs and whatnot and the things I usually speak about. I think it's a really good resource for people that haven't been there and want to kind of get an idea what the place is like, ask some fairly mundane sort of mud on the road ans questions that you're probably afraid to ask anywhere else or maybe you haven't even answered in an article. Definitely check it out on subreddit, on the subreddit, sorry, it's um, reddit.com or whatever, you know, Bergheim. But just type in Bergheim subreddit and you'll find it on there. Very, very good, useful um resource and they've got this really cool thing where whoever the mod or the leader is on that site does like a little um weekend or post so if it's a weekend you know this one just passed they'll put the dates on there and it'll be like an entire thread where you basically post an update of where you are in the queue what time you arrived who's at the door what's the vibe is like inside who's playing well who you like who didn't you like and it kind of gives you like a running um live report similar to like the Berghain live live kind of instagram account we can kind of get an idea on what's going on there and, and how the vibe is or whatnot so um you can always keep yourself informed so definitely a good resource and also they share some really interesting stories like behind the scenes stuff that you probably don't know about um give you an insight into you know maybe some of the things that go on behind the scenes and whatnot and one of the things that they kind of were able to shine a light on which i had no idea was happening was this courtesy of instagram sorry of twitter sorry and this is courtesy of the artist mickey blanco where it says um, she basically got rejected from Bergheim, right? And went into this crazy rant, um, which I feel like is completely unfair, but also goes to show just how unhinged that place makes people. Um, you know, one place in the world where they make it slightly difficult for you to get in. And the moment you don't get in, it turns into a complete soap opera. It's really bizarre to see. And it's interesting because I feel like when you do get rejected there, it shouldn't be personal because so many people got, try to go and only so many people can get in that it's just a lot of averages that one way or the other you're probably going to get rejected similar to myself right i haven't been rejected on my own ever but when i've been there with a group of people i've always been rejected it just is what it is and the saving grace of it is because that city is one of the best nightlife cities in the world if not the best if you do get rejected you can just go somewhere else like there's plenty of other places to go it's not like in london where if you were to travel to a location south east northwest you might end up having just to commit to it if you can't get in right you might have to commit to the area wherever it may be or try and figure out something else to go to like it's just going to be a complete nightmare to try and get yourself from north to east somewhere to go and rave just it's not gonna it's not gonna work so you have more reason to fly off the handle if you don't get in that fold uh, and then you can't make your way over to fabric because it's too late then you do not get into Bergen because you just you know it's just around the corner go to cop bus tour and there's plenty of clubs you can go and have a good time at but again we digress so it says the following um i don't know where we should start the top or the bottom i think from the bottom right it says here at the bottom i legitimately don't even go i, I legitimately don't think i'll ever go to bergheim again says mickey blanco the next one i performed there three times they had me host their new year's eve party and the last time i went they didn't let me in lol um, there are legit younger stimulating POCs doing fun parties and cool events in Berlin. I don't think I'm going to subject myself to the Berghain Nazis anymore. Them turning me away that much history is like too whack for me to fuck with them ever again. Obviously, calling the Berghain security P 
people and everyone enjoy you know that's involved with it nazis is absolutely insane batshit insane especially when you think about what that club stands for um the parties that they promote in there like snacks the people associated with the space the people that have played there what they champion what they talk about their politics the things that adorn the front of the flipping building it's just insane to call them nazis it really is insane and it's also insane because for the most part you're not calling them nazis based on a catalogue of events that's happened to other people it's mostly because you weren't able to get in you weren't able to get in and then they become nazis the entitlement is incredibly strong it kind of reminds me of that other dude who started screaming you know nazis and calling people racist because he wasn't able to not not wear his mask in an outdoor party which again looking back it was a bit ridiculous they probably went a bit too overboard maybe the security guy was a bit handy i've got i think it might have been was it rso club if it probably was iso club right the the new version of Gruce Miller. maybe the security guard was being a bit antsy maybe there was a miscommunication whatever they didn't like each other who knows non-verbal shit but in general going as far as calling somebody a racist because they told you to put your mask on and you feel as if it's just you is incredible levels of narcissism because you feel as if like you're above the rules and it's also incredible level of narcissism because you feel as if like it's always going to be personal when someone talks to you it's never just they just saw you and thought hey why has this person got their mask down put it back on and it can never just be oh on this night you went and you met the wrong person your vibe wasn't right and they just said no it's such a bizarre thing it really really is but on the same token these sort of stories make that place seemed like a far more you know um, appealing place to go to it kind of does the opposite in terms of turning people off it makes people more determined to go because they're like oh wow mickey blanco didn't get in she's really cool like comes from you know new york and the vogan scene and downtown and lower east side and physical therapy you know i mean like mickey blanco's cool and if mickey blanco didn't get in imagine if i get in that means i'm cooler than mickey blanco wow do you know what i mean it actually does the opposite it really does that's the actual that's the legitimate sad thing about it because again imagine this story was true let's extend an olive branch and say this story was actually true and she did get you know rejected predominantly based on her skin color which is insane to think but let's just think that's true does it matter really in the grand scheme of things will it make any change any any will it do anything to change the way that they kind of deal their door will it change how people react to the space or their desire to go of course not it's going to do absolutely diddly squat that's the absolute truth of it which is absolutely brutal but it's just interesting to me because i feel like maybe because in life we get things so easily in every walk of life whether it's you know buying vegetables and fruits in a flipping supermarket to accessing clothing fashion technology being able to jump on a plane and go into most places around the world for less than a thousand pounds you know things are so easy that when you suddenly encounter something that requires you to jump over some hoops in terms of uh, being able to go it does get people it does get up people's asses a bit it kind of does grate them i think of all the sex parties that we have here in the uk like crossbreed i forgot the other one two members only place we have to text a thing people do get really i don't know what it is about us humans in the modern era that we just get turned off and a bit irritated when people ask us to do things that we feel as if are like unnecessary in order for us to gain access to things that in other spaces or in other places they don't ask that for because you know there's plenty of other mega clubs in the world that don't have as strict as door policy as Burkheim does but because they have it whenever people do get rejected they go in absolute crazy tyrants I remember kind of semi falling out with a friend of mine because of that like they got really annoyed that I just didn't agree with their idea that they don't let certain people in based on their skin color because I was like no I'm a pure example of it and again I think the reason why I thought like it was a bit insulting was because it's like you're going on as if like I'm the most hipster of black guys you ever met definitely not I don't think so I don't think I'm even close to some of the guys I've seen in there and I've always said it's absolutely hilarious where every time I've been in Burka and usually the 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 coldest reactions I've got from people in there have been from fellow black guys I've seen in there who kind of get annoyed that you're another cool guy, cool black guy in the party. Do you know what I mean, it's a very weird sort of duel you have to kind of dance, you have to do in the dance floor and just try and basically say, hey, don't worry, guy, I'm not here to kind of steal your shine. I'm just going to, you know, if anything, be your flipping... Um, what's that thing called? Be your wingman. I'm not here to kind of, you know, scoop up the, the flipping... Um, 
<laughs> whoever you're interested in something my vibe i just don't understand that thing so i never understood that kind of point of view oh yeah you only get in because you're cool black it's like no i'm not i'm just a regular person that goes on my own that's into the music and if anything again i'm not the coolest that i've seen there there's definitely people that look way more cooler than me there you know what i mean covered in tattoos wearing amazing clothes fingernails colored and shit crazy shoes got a weird kind of international school accent wearing colors when you know glasses with weird colored lenses and shit i like just cool people with weird haircuts like and you see why they get in you get it they fit the space and i think i go and i'm like oh wow i'm surprised i got in thank you so the fact that people would then say oh my world experience tells me that that place is fundamentally run by nazis is just absolutely crazy and also you think to yourself as a former artist for sure there's a protocol that they have or there's something that needs to you know there's ways to go about things in terms of getting in if you're an artist but maybe that's what makes that place beautiful right is the fact that it's quite egalitarian in that way um it doesn't matter who you are like you know what's that famous story about um Blauan allegedly getting taken off of their um you know residence roster because he basically tried to invite a couple of prozies to the space or whatnot right um that's one story the other story is they try to get them behind a booth or he's trying to do drugs behind a booth whatever something where he basically got treated like anybody else if you tried to come and bring in a couple of exp es escorts in there they recognize it they wouldn't let them in if you try to do drugs on the dance floor you'd get chucked out maybe arrested so i like that they extend those rules that they apply so strictly to punters to everybody doesn't matter if you performed there, you founded it, you should know better. I mean, if anything, I'd imagine if you played there, they probably would be even harsher. Like, you, sh there's no, I mean, we can't be seen to basically make be making any exceptions because you should know better because you fucking played here. So I don't really understand that. So for sure, there's things that he could have done to increase the chances of getting in. But again, I just don't think it's that serious. I really don't. Like, you're never going to see me have a meltdown like this online because I didn't get into a nightclub. That's just like redacted to the nth degree i just don't understand this sort of level of thing and maybe it's because of him as a personality i'll show you she did the same person who got into an argument with flipping rihanna about something was it rihanna or is it who was her name who is that? i forgot who somebody something crazy happened and just went to the extreme end instead of being charitable and giving someone the benefit of the doubt it was just the unnecessary level of um you know shouty shouty online just for the sake of getting someone's attention it just didn't make any sense but you know maybe this will work Maybe this will end up being um, a reckoning in some way, shape or form. I don't necessarily think so. There's many people that know while going for that space and are willing to go there just as is, um, like myself. So yeah, it is what isn't it? The game is the game, man. You didn't get in, you didn't get in. No one gives a shit. Let's move on here. What else do we have to talk about quickly? Come on, load, you piece of crap. There we go. This is interesting, isn't it? This is courtesy of AP, um, AP News. It says, Asteroid movie released despite Lois' concern. Um, I, I told you before, in the moment I started seeing these foreign festivals or foreign, these festivals outside of North America booking Travis, for sure that gave me an in, in, inclination that probably most likely, if it comes to a court case or a lawsuit, he's not going to be the one that's going to be blamed. It's going to be things that are going to be, you know, mostly directed at, you know, is it AIG, whatever they're called, and Ticketmaster, and those kind of people, but it won't be something that will ever be laid at, his uh, laid at his feet. So that's why they're basically slowly but surely getting him back out there and um, doing shows and whatnot and all these movies are coming out which the you know travis Scott's lawyers will say oh it's not doing his client any benefits but if anything this is a good sign i mean because if you're able to perform despite these movies or these trailers or these, these documentaries coming out that are not going to paint you in a good light it goes to show that most people have basically moved on and they forgot about it which is tragic to say the least because what is it 30 kids died in, in that tragedy astral world isn't it it's like mad but the article says as follows the experiences of panicked concert goers who couldn't breathe and had no clear path to escape a massive crowd surge at last year's deadly astral world music festival in houston are featured in a documentary released friday but lawyers of live nation which is being sued for its role case live nation not aig sorry which is being sued for its role the festival's promoters say they're concerned that the publicity for the documentary concert crush the travis scott festival tragedy could taint the jury pool the gag order has been issued in the case but live nation's lawyers say an attorney who fired lawsuits related to the tragedy also co-produced a documentary <laughs> the scummy nature of these things boy especially for scott who's also being sued was also critical 
Director Charlie Min said he believes that he made a balanced and fair film that tries to show the public what happened. My job is to make the most truthful, honest, sincere documentary for the victim's point of view. We need to know about these stories to prevent it from happening again, says Min. Fair enough, but it's a cash grab. Um, da, 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 da. Um, around 500 lawsuits have been filed since November the 5th. Concert headlines um, by Scott, a popular rapper. 10 people, don't have 10, not 30. 10 people died and hundreds of others were injured during the massive crowd surge. The documentary is showing 11 Texas cities, including Austin, Dallas, and Houston. It includes interviews with several people who survived. It also features cell phone footage from concert goers in which people can be heard repeatedly screaming for help. It's hard to explain to friends and to family what we saw and what we actually went through. And I think the documentary will give people a lot of opportunities opportunity if you weren't there to understand said frank alvarez who attended the concert but does not appear in the film the film highlights what concert goes experience and what led to the tragedy said min who also said who also made documentaries about the deadly 2018 shooting in the suburb sub uh, suburban houston school and the violence along with the u.s mexican border the film suggests scott could have done more to prevent the conditions that led to the casualties but min said it isn't a hit piece towards travis scott he also has he also had questions whether others including live nation and the houston police could have done more to improve safety min said scott live nation and houston police declined to be interviewed for the documentary houston police are investigating the case of course they declined come on man it's, it's not the best thing to do um and then moving on this news courtesy of excel um says as follows uh security company that failed to stop dave Chappelle attacker was also the same one that worked at astroworld and they're also saying it's the same security company that was there when um what's his face uh draco the ruler passed away that other festival he got stabbed in the neck crazy in it the company responsible for um securing the netflix there's a joke comedy festival where dave Chappelle attacked the stage reportedly the same company that provided the security in travis scott asherwood i think this is a clever ploy from travis scott's team to counteract the documentary putting this news out um linking those things together link get it um contemporary services corporation one of the largest event security firms in the country has come under security for failing to keep um isaiah lee from attacking dave Chappelle during his set at hollywood bowl los angeles in may 3rd lee ran on stage with a replica gun that had a knife attached to it and tackled dave before lee was able to de be detained by security personnel according to a buzzfeed news article published on sunday may 8th comedian tevon said csc guard ignored his warning that a man with a backpack and wearing a hoodie breached the barrier he said uh, she shrugged me off said gastry and within a minute lee had host hosted himself on stage and knocked the ship out down another person who worked on the show told buzzfeed there was no real hiring process and safety protocols were pushed to the side in the name of speediness, which sounds oddly similar to what happened at the Asher one. Remember when all those security kids were coming out saying that, you know, they got hired on the spot to do security, quote unquote. They didn't really get any training. Half of them were on their phone. Crazy. It says, yeah, we were told it was going to be a big crowd and to get them in as fast as possible, said the worker who did not want to be named. There were no details on what they meant and how to do it and just to get them in as fast as possible. The company also commissioned um, two safeguards, Travis Scott, Astral Festival that ended in Tebby would die. The, the company also reportedly worked on the Once Upon a Time Festival where Draco and Ruler was killed, as well as the Route 91 Fire Festival shooting in 2017, where 58 people were killed when Stephen Paddock opened fire at concert girls from the 32 second floor suite in the Mandalay Bay Hotel. But yeah, crazy, isn't it? That the links that they're making the things that are involved and again this is another sobering indication that when you have money when you generate money for people when you are very important to their bottom line when you are the sole reason why their kid goes to an international boarding school somewhere in switzerland why they're able to afford a second mortgage on a condo somewhere in miami why they drive their nice car why they can take their wife to crazy places or whatnot when you're at that level of importance they're going to do whatever they can to make sure that you're able to get back on stage and dance and sing and do what needs to be done to keep that money coming in because they can't afford another year where he's not performing or doing shows it doesn't make any sense it's travis scott so i was never of the thinking that he was ever going to be personally responsible personally held responsible for what happened that show well it would have been nice same way it would have been nice to have seen black china win her court case against the kardashians because just so they can have one blotch on their record to show that hey you can't bully everybody but the reality of it 
is that if you are somebody of influence, somebody of a notoriety, somebody of some level of you know wealth, you can bully who do you want, and you can get away with what most people can't get away with. It's just simple as that. And sooner rather than later, we're going to see Travis on all our all the famous festivals that we know of. At the moment, they're touring him around the sort of like cancelled person festival tour where you're doing stuff outside North America, Central America, South America, where people generally don't tend to care or no while go on right do you know what I mean and um, you can get away with far more over there than you can probably maybe get away in terms of press and media and all that sort of stuff public scrutiny when in other places you know I mean I'm sure if he did a festival here in Europe in the UK for instance it'd be absolutely popping there's no way I don't believe that so it just is what it is and when it comes to that sort of stuff it is what it is oh it's already 123 and i think i'm have to end it there to be honest because i've got to jump on and do some other things so that has been the external English episode number 573 i think thanks again for tuning in. it's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual my um computer has now been fixed i've bought a new one so you know i should be able to do more of these more often because i think that's what was kind of making me a bit of a bit what's i think hesitant to get back on it because my macbook from previously that i've been using basically died on me but now i've got a new one that's working absolutely perfectly so because of that i'll be able to do this far more regularly than i was beforehand like i was before anyway and be able to provide you with the content that you so desperately need from moi as per usual there's going to be a tune of the day played today it's going to be a bit of a surprise because i don't really know what it is so if you listen to the show you'll hear a tune of the day if you're watching it it will end right away here but thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company see you soon peace